Uh, welcome everyone. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, how to audit the enterprise blockchain in an efficient way. I'm uh, Boha Yang from uh, Oracle, and I'm the principal architect of the Oracle blockchain team. So today I will cover several topics. Um, the first one we will share uh, why do we need to do the uh, auditing when you're using the blockchain technologies in the enterprise environment. And uh, when you want to do the blockchain auditing, why it's, uh, it's challenging and uh, what problem you need to resolve. And if you uh, want to design or implement one, uh, auditing framework, uh, how to do it uh, efficiently. And uh, the last I will uh, show uh, efficient um, design of the uh, auditing framework. We, we can see the components in the system. And finally, I will show the evaluation results to demo how uh, quick and uh, the, the performance we can achieve. Okay, so <clears throat> why do we need the uh, uh, auditing for the uh, enterprise blockchain? I think I think there might might be uh, four major reasons. The first one is for the platform users and the, the operators. They need to uh, know uh, what has happened with the platform, what operations have been taken, and uh, what transactions have been uh, received by the platform. And uh, the second major uh, reason is uh, sometimes you want to improve the performance of your blockchain system, and you need to figure out where is the bottleneck. And the third one is related to the security. It's really when you find uh, something is uh, uh, not normal in the system, you need to figure out what happened. And uh, the last one is related to the policy uh, requirements. Uh, basically, uh, there might be some uh, uh, compliance requirements or other uh, requirements that need you to do the auditing. OK, so when we do the uh, auditing for the blockchain system, what exactly need to be audited? Uh, there might be. Uh, uh, members of resources that you want to do the auditing on, but uh, usually we can categorize them uh, into three dimensions. The first one is uh, uh, the, who is using the blockchain resource. For example, who uh, is using the, the peer, or who is using the order within the order fabric, for example. And the, the second one is the transaction uh, level. So what transaction has been uh, received by the, the platform uh, in a specific date or how and how many and how many transactions happened? And uh, the last one is uh, if you you may want to know um, is everything okay with the system? Is there any um, data or activity is uh, not expected? So all these things need to be uh, audited if we, if you want to do the auditing for the enterprise blockchain. So actually, auditing is uh, not a quite new feature for the um, for the information system. Uh, many other technologies are already are uh, using the auditing uh, features. Including those uh, websites, uh, enterprise uh, information systems, software. And taking the websites, for example, um, the today's uh, websites they typically using the auditing widely uh, for two major uh, purposes. The first one they, is that they want to trace the performance issue, they especially want to find the bottleneck for the performance how soon the page can be loaded, and uh, how soon the link can be jumped to. And the second one, they want to have a chill uh, SEO. They want to uh, improve their ranking in the internet. And uh, from uh, for the website auditing, uh, the 
most used way to implement auditing uh, is uh, to insert some uh, tracing codes into every page. Then when a user visits the page, the tracing code will record the information and the back. And the, the second one is uh, you can do it uh, uh, offline. You need to uh, analyze those service uh, log files, especially for the load balancer or the web servers. You can see uh, from what IP has uh, uh, visited uh, a specific page. So here is an example for the website uh, auditing results. From the page, you can see um, it records uh, uh, for last 14 days how many sessions happen, how many users, and new users, and uh, how soon uh, you can uh, land in uh, specific pages. And uh, also, uh, when the user ex exits uh, the page from web page, and uh, including the landing performance and the page depth. And also the bounce rate. All these metrics can give you some clue to understand what happened with your websites and uh, how to improve it. So if we want to adopt these uh, mechanisms into blockchain auditing, we will find it um, kind of uh, challenging. So basically, the blockchain system is uh, different from today's uh, websites architecture. Architecture. The blockchain itself is uh, always distributed and uh, multi party. So it's uh, different. Every time you agree to add some auditing code into every component. And uh, what is worse, we all, we all know that adding tracing code into the system will slow down the performance, which is uh, not uh, welcome today. And uh, enterprise blockchain typically, um, when we use it in the production environment, we will enable the login level at least with the warning level. So if you want to uh, analyze the uh, log files and to find the audit information, you will find the few. So all these uh, factors will make the blockchain auditing uh, challenging. So with all the challenges, um, how to overcome them and uh, Im implement uh, efficient uh, blockchain auditing. So we need some uh, uh, observation. Um, the first one is uh, we found that uh, with the blockchain, actually uh, the members of the network, they will share, typically they will share the same uh, ledger data. Taking the hub ledger uh, fabric, for example, there there's a channel, and every member in the channel they will have exactly the same uh, ledger data. They can see uh, all the activity inside of the channel, and uh, all the transactions in the ledger in the channel will be recorded into the ledger, and it is stored in the uh, blockchain here uh, locally. And uh, we also know that uh, in order to generate the blockchain space, uh, we only need the ledger data. So it's the, it's the fundamentals to generate all the space. So with these uh, observations, we will see that if we want to analyze the ledger data directly, it is always uh, difficult due to two reasons. The first one is the letter size is usually large. We have seen the letter size with a, in a single channel over hundreds of uh, gigabytes. And what is what is worse is uh, with more and more incoming transactions, the letter size is always growing. So if we want to do the blockchain auditing based on those uh, ledger data, we need to design a uh, efficient algorithm and also we need to design an efficient system to make it uh, high performance <laughs> so this is the basic overview of, uh, of the proposed auditing system 
Um, you can see uh, we have uh, clients, we have API handler, ledger Wi-Fi, DB, and the ledger. So the client and the ledgers is uh, uh, it's out of uh, the auditing framework flow. So majorly focus on the API API handler and the ledger verifier and the, the DB here. So the first one is the API handler. The API handler typically it uh, provides those uh, auditing RESTful APIs to the clients. Based uh, on our uh, survey, we found that today uh, most of users they would like to use the RESTful APIs to get the auditing information. So when the client send the uh, audit, audit uh, RESTful API request to the API handler. The API handler here, uh, it has two options to do the response. So the first one is the API handler, it, it can directly read the uh, uh, stored results from the DB directly. This is a recommended way because it's uh, allowed to uh, allow a very quick response. And uh, it also uh, allow you to decouple the API handler from the ledger verifier. And the second way is uh, the API, if there is no such uh, DB storage, then you can let the API handler directly uh, call the ledger verifier here. And uh, the ledger verifier will get the auditing uh, result uh, on the fly. So, in, in this case, if, if the ledger uh, is, uh, volume is large, then the response might be slow. So here's some examples of our image uh, auditing API. The first, uh, with the first, you can see with the first API, um, we uh, return to the auditing uh, information for a specific uh, channel. And the following, so we can return the, the health status for the nodes and the resource usage, and also the invocations and the number of billable transactions, and also do static uh, uh, in terms of blocks and more. With all this uh, uh, information returned from the auditing API, you will know uh, everything with the, the uh, blockchain service. So the second major component is the ledger verifier. Uh, this is the core component of the entire system because it will uh, directly process the local ledger and to check whether the data is integrated according to a specific criteria here. So the criteria is uh, uh, we can have a, a very flexible uh, criteria. For example, we can simply check if the ledger file is uh, formatted correctly, and uh, we can only check the data hash, and uh, we can also check the, the hash is uh, changed. The previous hash is, is matched with, with the uh, previous block, and we can check uh, more data here. And in terms to uh, improve, uh, provide a high performance uh, processing speed, we can have uh, two processing models here. The first one is the uh, full processing. It means that we will process the ladder from the very beginning. So it, it may take a, a long, longer time if the ladder size is big. And then the second one is uh, we, what we call the, the incremental processing. That's we do not uh, process the letter from the very beginning, but uh, from the position that uh, last time we have pro processed. And we, we can also record uh, the, the process of position into the external database. So this incremental processing is uh, very friendly for a high performance requirement. The third component is the, what we call the DB. Uh, it will store the results by the ledger verifier, 
And also you can store other necessary metadata information. For example, you can make the uh, framework in a distributed or clustered deployment. And uh, someone may uh, have a question uh, that uh, how we can pro protect the DB data to avoid modif modifications from uh, uh, bad guys. So in this case, we always recommend you can deploy the DB in a safe environment. You can use a uh, self-verified DB like uh, the blockchain table. And even you can post the DB in another uh, blockchain. So here's an example auditing results. Uh, the results shows a valid on the uh, blockchain ladder. You can see the timestamp, uh, how soon it uh, is being processed, and ladder file, ladder height, and those block, block numbers, and the uh, transaction number, uh, config block index, and also the hash values. This example shows uh, if uh, uh, the returned message is invalid. You can see uh, using the tool, we have identified the previous hash is uh, mismatched at uh, the block, block two. Uh, it, there is an expected value, but uh, the pre hash value stored in block two does not match it. And now we also return to the uh, failure uh, letter file. With all this information, uh, you can have some uh, operator to check what has happened. So in order to find uh, uh, more details of uh, the uh, audit, uh, blockchain auditing, we also provide those statistics within a single block. Basically, it's those uh, hash value, previous hash value, and the data hash, and the number of transactions, and also its size. So uh, we have several uh, performance evaluation. The first one is uh, to test uh, the system throughput, the transaction per second. Uh, you can see there's uh, two curves uh, on the chart. Uh, the top one is uh, we only do the analysis. We do not do the verification. And uh, the below one is uh, we do the an analysis and also we do the verification. Uh, and uh, the x, x axis is uh, the number of CPU calls. You can see with one CPU call, we can achieve uh, 50,000 uh, TPS with the verification enabled. And with, without the verification, we can achieve around uh, 150,000 TPS. And uh, I also want to mention that uh, the uh, this uh, framework can take advantage of concurrency. With the more uh, CPU calls, definitely the, the speed will increase. You may notice the, the trend of the curve is not uh, uh, linear after uh, three CPU calls. And because uh, with more than three CPU calls in our uh, test environment, the IO will become the bottleneck. So the second performance evaluation uh, is uh, related to the memory allocated. And uh, here we test with uh, different numbers of blocks from 1,000 to uh, 128,000. You can see the allocated uh, memory is always stable around uh, 60 uh, megabytes. So it means the, the auditing framework is very stable in the memory usage. We also collect the data with the total uh, uh, cumulative uh, hip, hip bytes. That means that the memory has been allocated uh, during the processing. You can see it's uh, uh, nearly linear with the number of blocks. That also means that the memory usage of the framework is very stable. And 
this chart uh, shows the, the number of DC times with the, the number of blocks. You can see the code here is uh, also linear. That means uh, uh, the latency behavior of the framework will be stable. OK, uh, so that's all uh, of the presentation. Uh, thank you. And uh, let's see whether there is uh, questions. Let me see the QA. So the first uh, question is uh, from uh, Rafael Belchio. Uh, the question is uh, chain code to automatic execute audit. We have tried this. Do you think that this methodology is suitable? Uh, he gives the link. Let me open the link. Oh, it's uh, it's a, a paper uh, titled "Towards Secure, Decentralized, and Automatic Audits with the Blockchain." But sorry, I haven't uh, read this uh, paper before, so I may need some time to read it before I can answer on this question. The second question is, uh, it looks like the overall goal is to capture the ladder state. So then analysts could make sense of the data. Uh, but could we analyze this data in real time, in your opinion? I believe we could use. Yes, yes. Actually, we uh, our tool is doing it in the real time. But uh, in terms of a uh, very large uh, ledger size, we need uh, to do some uh, uh, optimization. For example, the, those the incremental processing here. In this case, we can uh, re always return the response on the API request in real time. 